In this video, we will explain the project currently underway to provide a detailed assessment of the Glessner House roof. Henry Hobson Richardson's specifications for the house called for the use of terracotta roof tiles from Akron, Ohio. The tiles measure 6 by 12 inches and are 3 eighths of an inch thick. The large tiles at the peak of the gables are known as camelback ridge rolls and are also made of terracotta. There is a standing seam copper roof over the main hall, and the Glessners later had the same material installed over the glass of the conservatory. The roof covers about 8,000 square feet in total and is a complex structure due to the combination of gables, dormers, and turrets, in addition to granite and brick parapet walls and chimneys. Copper is used for the valleys where the gables intersect and for the gutters and downspouts, as well as the decorative covers where they meet, known as leader boxes. It is highly likely that the brilliant orange color of the roof would have only been enjoyed by the Glessners for a short period of time. Dirt and coal soot would have blackened the roof, and it was not until 2000 that it was completely cleaned, revealing its original appearance. The roof was in poor condition when the building was saved in 1966, as seen here in this view of the west portion over the coach house. Although the tiles themselves are very sturdy, the nails that held them in place rusted, resulting in the loss of many tiles, giving water an opportunity to infiltrate the building. In 1971, the entire east side of the roof facing Prairie Avenue was replaced. Although most of the surviving tiles could be reused, many had been lost through the years. These two photos by Richard Nickel show that work underway. A few years later, when work was being done on the roof over the coach house, it was discovered that the old Chicago Historical Society building at Dearborn in Ontario was being renovated. The tiles being removed and discarded were identical to those used on Glessner House, and we were able to purchase 10,000 tiles to make the necessary repairs. Additional repairs have been made through the years, primarily to address storm damage or in response to a leak. These photos show a repair project at the northeast corner of the house undertaken in 2017. Despite all the work put into the roof through the years, there are still several areas of active water infiltration. These two photos show damage in the corner guest room and Simmerling Gallery, located at the northeast and southeast corners of the building, respectively. In October 2020, we contracted with Wiss Jenny Elsner Associates to undertake the comprehensive roof assessment. Wiss Jenny specializes in the investigation, analysis, testing, and design of repairs for both historic and contemporary buildings. Here we see team members on day one, which included a visual analysis from the ground and the use of a drone. The drone is a key part of the process as technology has advanced to the point where significant detail can be seen in the still photography and videos that are taken by the drone. This helps the team to determine the areas that require further investigation with the use of a boom lift. Two boom lifts were used in coordination with Berglund Construction. A 40-foot lift in the courtyard, seen here, and a 60-foot lift for the perimeter of the building. Using all available documentation from previous repairs, an interior inspection of current issues, and the drone footage, the team was able to pinpoint the areas to analyze closer, allowing current conditions to be thoroughly documented. In addition to the roof itself, copper flashing around chimneys, sealants and other materials were analyzed, as areas where various materials come together are often the most susceptible to failure. The team, led by Sarah Van Damelen, shown here, also looked at other parts of the building not easily visible from the street, such as the west-facing Hayloft Dormer, to determine and document those conditions. 
We look forward to receiving the roof assessment, which will be used in two ways. The first is to prioritize current issues and determine how best to address them. The second is to create a long-term maintenance plan to ensure that the roof and its related components remain in excellent shape for decades to come. Stay tuned.